And the former president also touching on some of the key topics he's been campaigning on, spending several minutes in particular on border security. He actually used Rachel Morin's case right here in Maryland as an example of why he wants to crack down on illegal immigration. I also met recently with the heartbroken mother and sister of Rachel Morin. Rachel was a 37-year-old mom of five beautiful children who was brutally raped and murdered while out on a run. She wanted to keep herself in good shape. It was very important to her. She was murdered. The monster responsible first killed another woman in El Salvador before he was led into America by the White House. Rachel's mother will never be the same. Now, this highly anticipated speech is only one of several big headlines we've been following this week. On the other side of the aisle, President Joe Biden is still recovering from COVID. And tonight, we got the chance to catch up with Governor Westmore to see if he's still feeling good about Mr. Biden's re-election bid. We also got his thoughts on Mr. Trump's VP candidate and the attempted assassination. I continue to pray for his uh, for his continued healing. Uh, political violence has no place in our society from anybody. Uh, not now, not ever. And so I continue to pray for his safety. Maryland Governor Westmore telling us earlier this evening he's interested to see what Mr. Trump has to say in his first big speech since the attempted assassination. But I also know that I'm I'm curious to see uh, where his what his vision is for the future for the country in, in four years, uh, because, the, you know, my support for President Biden is because I've heard his vision uh, for the next four years. And the big speech comes just one day after Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, who the governor says he's known for a long time, accepted the nomination to be Mr. Trump's vice presidential running mate. Now, I pledge to every American, no matter your party, I will give you everything I have to serve you and to make this country a place where every dream you have for yourself, your family, and your country will be possible once again. More referencing the fact that Vance used to be a critic of the former president, but now Moore says Vance is not the person he met many years ago. To hear J.D. Vance now saying uh, that you know he is for a nationwide abortion ban, uh, to hear J.D. Vance now saying that he, uh, he is railing against Medicare and railing against the Affordable Care Act, which is supporting so many people in this country. And Vice President Kamala Harris, who will face Vance in the general, agrees. He talked about his life story about growing up in southwest Ohio, and it was compelling. It's a compelling story. And it was not the full story. This all comes as President Joe Biden continues to recover from COVID. That diagnosis adding fuel to the fire after he said in an interview he would consider stepping down if he had a medical condition that made it necessary. But tonight, Governor Moore telling us the COVID diagnosis does not change his support for the president. I'm not just uh, you know praying for his uh, speedy recovery, but, it, it, but uh, the president is also the nominee and, and, is, uh, and I'm going to support him. And we also know tonight that former President Barack Obama, as well as former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi have privately expressed concerns to President Biden about his campaign. That makes them the two most prominent Democrats to do so at this point. Live in the newsroom, Tori Yorkie, WBIL TV 11 News.